Montenegro, which, by the way, is smaller than the state of Connecticut. Montenegro has fewer residents than the District of Columbia. It's a relatively poor place. It has no critical natural resources and limited strategic significance. Few Americans could find it on a map or name its capital or its president. That's not a slur against Montenegro. Apparently, it's a nice place, but those are the facts about Montenegro. From an American perspective, it's not an important country. And yet suddenly, because of an act of Congress that few people noticed, Montenegro has profound significance to every American. Since last year, Montenegro has been a member of the NATO alliance. That means that if Montenegro ever finds itself in a war, our military is pledged to defend it. That's called the defense guarantee. Defense guarantees don't seem like a big deal until suddenly they are. That's how the First World War started. 37 million casualties later, the world began to rethink the wisdom of treaties like that. But the lesson seems to have been lost since. In our interview with President Trump in Finland, we thought it might be worth having a conversation or starting one about America's obligations to NATO. So we asked a simple question. Why is it in our interest to defend the territorial integrity of Montenegro? Why should our soldiers fight and die on its behalf? Here's the exchange we had. So membership in NATO obligates the members to defend any other member that's attacked. So let's say Montenegro, which joined last year, is attacked. Sure. Why should my son go to Montenegro to defend it from attack? I Why is that? I understand what you're saying. I've asked the same question. You know, uh, Montenegro is a tiny country with very strong people. Yeah, I'm not Albania. against Montenegro uh, right. or Albania. No, by the way, they're very strong people. They're very aggressive people. They make it aggressive. And congratulations, you're in World War III. Now, uh, I understand that, the, but that's the way it was set up. So that's not a definitive answer, obviously, but the president clearly had been thinking about it, and good for him. Presidents are supposed to wonder about things like that. Serious countries ought to have debates like that. The U.S. has to defend Montenegro? Really? Why is that? Is there a good reason? Let's hear it. That's the conversation we should be having. But the guardians of our public conversation are not serious people. They are hacks and buffoons. For wondering about our defense guarantee with Montenegro, Trump is being denounced for treason. For asking the question, we're accused of taking orders from Vladimir Putin. What do the Russians have on Tucker Carlson, asked longtime CNN star Kathy Griffin. Her former network did an entire segment this afternoon suggesting that Americans somehow have some sort of moral obligation to lay down their lives for Montenegro. Here's part of it. Yet again, raising serious doubts about whether he would honor Article 5 of the NATO Charter, if it came down to it, it's a cornerstone of the alliance. An armed attack on one nation is an attack on all. This time the president questioned whether the United States should honor its agreement when it comes to NATO's newest member, Montenegro. So the argument apparently is that because Montenegro has about 20 non-combatants in Afghanistan right now, we, the U.S., has an eternal obligation to spend American money and lives defending Montenegro's borders. That is idiotic, which is to say perfect for cable news. In real life, a defense guarantee is not something you'd enter into lightly. It's like promising a friend to take care of his kids if he dies. It's a solemn commitment, and you would not make it unless you planned to keep it. So the question is, do we plan to keep it? Do we really plan to defend Montenegro? Or many of the other NATO members? How about Estonia? How about Slovakia? You ready to have your kids die in those countries? The U.S. government is ready to send them. We've promised to do that. NATO was created almost 70 years ago for a specific and noble purpose, keeping the Soviets from invading Western Europe. It worked, thank God. But the Soviet Union no longer exists, and it hasn't existed for almost 30 years. NATO, meanwhile, is still around, and it's getting bigger. Why is that? And more to the point, is it serving America's interests, or is it imperiling them? Those are vital questions. Official Washington does not want to answer them or talk about them. They're trying to crush anyone who asks. We are not intimidated, obviously.